Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zen Chats. I am Zeneca, and I'm so excited by today's episode. I got to talk to a couple of people from a project that are sequencing human genomes and giving full custody of them to the, the participants whose genomes are being sequenced using blockchain technology. It is fascinating. It is truly cutting edge. Of, like It's at the cutting edge of med tech and blockchain technology, self-custody, ownership, uh, data, security, and privacy. And there's just so much to this project. Cannot wait to share it with everyone. So let's jump right in. All right. Hello, Aldo and intern. Hi, Zeneca. Welcome to, um, yeah, Zen Chats. This is, I think, number six or seven now of these YouTube chats. And they're there. Honestly, I love them because I get to talk to project founders like yourselves and people who are involved on the other side of, of these interesting projects. And that's part of the goal to talk about interesting projects. And, and Genomes is probably the most interesting NFT project I've ever seen. So I'm super excited. Yeah, I mean, so I'll, I mean, I obviously know a bit about it, just so everyone knows I've been advising Genomes DAO for a few months about this NFT drop, but um, there's still more that I, I haven't learned. And I think that there's a lot that viewers can learn. So maybe before we get into Genomes DAO, you can give like a little bit of background on yourself and how you sort of just came to know about NFTs and crypto in the first place. Um, and then we can get closer to the project. Sure. Um, first of all, thanks so much for, for having us in, in one of these chats. It's a great honor. And then also thanks a lot for calling us one of the most interesting NFT projects. That means a lot. It really is. <laughs> so much appreciated. So uh, we started uh, uh, Genomes.io in 2018. We really wanted to build a solution that um, gives people the power at all times so they could uh, keep control over their genome. Now, another word for genome, a more mainstream word, is basically your DNA. It's kind of you know the sequence, the code that makes you you. Um, and we always call it the blueprint to who you are. So it's a it's a very uh, specific scientific code that um, basically unlocks genetic information about you. Um, and it's very valuable. And uh, so, so in, in, in the 22 years that we've been able to sequence genomes, the value has, has exponentially grown. Uh, and the reason for that is that because we learn so much from reading our genomic sequence. Um, and uh, so the first time it was done uh, was in, in the year 2000. So the sequencing of your genome, the cost back then was a few billion uh, to get it all going. Wow. Uh, right now, this is kind of a mainstream market product, um, which which will cost you just over $500, um, you know, roundabout um, to get it going. So you can imagine that in 22 years' time, a lot has changed and a lot has happened. So there's that lightning speed that, is, that, that has evolved. Um, and for us, an indication that the, the value is not in the sequencing, the value is really in what we can find out about each other uh, through reading our genomic information. Now, why we started Genomes.io is because we saw loads of initiatives and companies in the market that, that also realized the value of this DNA information. And they had clever ways and still have clever ways to get you to waive basically the right um, to, 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 to use that information in a, also in a commercial sense. So these companies are direct to consumer genetic companies. Um, you might have heard of 23andMe, uh, MyHeritage or Ancestry.com. So what they do is they sell you a, um, a, a gimmicky Ancestry report. Um, you pay them around $150 to get that done. Um, and how it works is basically they send you a kit, you part with some saliva and a tube that goes to their laboratory, and then they basically take care of uh, the sequencing. And in, in exchange, basically, for the sequencing, you get that report. Now, what you've also consented to by working with them is that basically they get to keep the data. 
and they do not only get to keep it, they also can sell it on. And so mm -hmm. these companies in the past, and you know, if you go to our um, our, 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 our blog on, on Medium, which is genomesdow.medium.com, you, you 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 know, we've we've written uh, several uh, posts um, about kind of these massive deals that are in the hundreds of millions of dollars, whereby they they effectively cross sell your information to the pharmaceutical industry, to research organizations, to kind of people who want to use the data uh, for commercial reasons. Now, uh, what, what we say is you, you, you might be doing something that adds up legally, but what you're doing is, is not really right from an ethical perspective because you, you don't, a lot of people that have kind of bought this report, they might have not been aware that this was what you're going to do, that you were going mm -hmm. to make money off the back of that information. Um, and another, another thing as well, you know, regardless of the money, is that you are no longer in control of that information. So these companies get taken over um, or these companies sell off their assets, which could also be that information. These companies have web 2.0 databases that get hacked. So there are a variety of things that can happen with that data that leaves you very exposed. And so once your DNA or your genomic information is out there, um, people can use it for a variety of reasons that you might not want to. So, and, and you know, in, in, in the past, we've heard of um, situations whereby people did not get a, a certain insurance policy. They were refused a certain insurance policy because their genomic information exposed that they were more susceptible to heart disease. Uh, people were not employed. Um, because the genomic information of, you know, uh, someone else who was applying for the job looked a little better. Um, you know, we, we've heard stories of deportation. So there are quite a bit. And so I, I'm sorry to say these are also not conspiracy theory, uh, big brothery uh, stories. These, these are all things that are, have already really happened. And unfortunately, now we live in an era whereby I think every single week, we read new kind of articles or we see on the news situations whereby genomic information has been used in the wrong way. So it's, it's, it's really kind of a very current topic. So our solution is very befitting with the Web 3.0 um, spirit, um, uh, uh, kind of an infrastructure whereby um, we will help you to sequence your genome. But once it's sequenced, it will be put into a vault. It will be encrypted in a vault. And th that vault is yours. And you are the only one who can basically open that vault. Um, we won't be able to open that vault. Um, and once it's on there, we can then help you, if you would like, to still work with the previously mentioned organizations or so pharmaceutical companies, research organizations, rare disease charities, but... Uh, they would only be able to work with the information in your vault with your explicit consent. So we would ask you every single time um, uh, if, 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 you know, if they would want to query your data. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, if there's a commercial benefit or a financial reward that you can make, then you can participate in that. So it's not necessarily anymore that you know, can be cross-sold behind your back. No, you can also be financially rewarded for you know this organization uh using your data because they also use it for commercial purposes uh intern was there something you wanted to jump in and add uh yeah um i guess i, I just wanted to um uh, going back to maybe like the the original question like the why web3 why nfts why crypto and kind of why people get into this space to begin with right i think everyone who I, I'm sure you probably heard this, but everyone who gets into crypto initially, it's probably because they're trying to make a little bit of money. But then once they're in crypto, they realize, well, wow, this technology is so powerful. You can do so much with it. And they stay for all the other interesting things you can do, all the other ways that you can actually change um, antiquated systems for the better. And um, I guess just touching on a few things, um, because I think we zo we zoomed really quickly from like the beginning to like the the vaults and everything. 
Um, so genomes.io went through um, Consensus Tachyon, right? So Consensus is the company behind MetaMask. Um, and their accelerator um, is the Tachyon, which helps new projects kind of um, become web threeified, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. um, back when they went through uh, Genomes.io went through uh, Consensus, uh, DAOs weren't really like a thing at that point right? Now DAOs are like, you know, there's a DAO for everything. Um, so I just wanted to like touch on the the tokenomics and the crypto aspect of things. You mentioned 2018 is when you started all this. This is before NFTs are not in the picture at all at this point. Yeah. So there's genomes, the idea um, to give, I guess, self-custody of people's genomes. Um, it started back then. How, um, how did it work? Like, you know, someone... Comes yeah. goes to genomes and IO. Um, what are the next steps? Yeah, so I mean, we were we were very much a Web 2.0 solution, whereby um, we were we were selling kits and we started selling kits on first Indiegogo, which is kind of a, a Kickstarter-like yeah. platform. So you can you know for a deeply discounted price, you can get a you know an early uh, you, you're very early in with buying a product, and 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 people could just buy buy a kit, and and through that kit we would de- uh, de- develop a vault. Um, the first two and a half years of our existence, also as intern said, we worked with companies that could really help us develop the tech stack. So I think you know NFTs and as well as the crypto, the utility and governance token, we weren't necessarily ready for that because that's really kind of you know, there's a lot of engagement that comes along with that. There's lots of communication, lots of PR, lots of outreach that comes along with with those tools. And for the first two and a half years, we didn't we didn't necessarily uh, look at that um, because we wanted to get the technology right. We wanted to really have something that was sound that, that made sense. And and for that, because we didn't feel like we 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 can, we can go out there saying we have a full technology keeping your genome safe, and then at the first kind of you know, uh, trial that it would be hacked or something like that. So we said, you know, it really needs to be solid. It really needs to work properly. And it took us a while also to get it right. For instance, for the Vault uh, technology, we we work with tools given to us by AMD. So, you know, they're, they're the, I think, the biggest hardware company in the world, advanced micro devices. They have a very advanced encryption technology that we use to build our vaults, right? So the software we built is based on their tools built with AMD SAVES. Um, and on our, on our Git book, we describe in detail kind of how that technology works, how it's set up and, 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 and you know, why it's a, it's a very safe and good thing to work with. So um, only kind of in 2021, oh, we, we always had it in our roadmap that we, we should start working also with tokens because in describing our technology, um, we were talking about the privacy of your data and controlling your data, but we also noticed that that's a nice conversation opener. But people really want to, you know, they want to make it happen, and 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 the privacy is one thing, but then also being able to, um, you know, to, to to see the value, you know, maybe through those financial rewards for some people, but also to to really give it a give it a face and a name in the in the in the web 3.0 world and in the crypto world that goes through a token essentially and and that's a step that we took um uh, and in in i think the second half of, of 2021 um you know uh, more notably in and i think uh, in november when we introduced um the gene token as our utility token and then GNOME, so G-N-O-M-E, as our governance token. And we did that through a uh, public sale on, on MISO, um, uh, so on sushi.com. And, 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 and we're happy to say that that was successful. And that also opened, for me, um, um, who, who is, you know, so my, my co-founder, Mark, is, is, is more crypto savvy than I am. But for me, it was really an eye-opener in talking to people in the community. So in the Web 3.0 community, whereby a lot of people shared that concern of, listen, the, the way things are set up now, the status quo when it comes to dealing with data, whether this is genomic data or other type of data, that isn't right. 
Um, so, so and, and for me, that was really an eye opener. And I really enjoyed having conversation and still enjoy having those conversations, whether it's on Discord or on Twitter spaces, whereby people talk about how, how you should deal with data and, and, and what, what, what's the way forward here without being too exposed or without giving too much power basically to, you know, to huge organizations who are only going to get richer from, from using your data. So that was really kind of an eye opener. So, so the, um, and then the, the NFT is also kind of, you know, also came out of having conversations with the Web 3.0 community, whereby we were looking for a good version of what we did in, in 2020 on Indiegogo to say, okay, how does that translate to a, you know, into the Web 3.0 world, whereby we have a kind of value cre- creation in a digital sense through NFTs, um, which, which is amazing, but, but we also have kind of a real life value, right? Which is, in, and, and, and to our idea, in our opinion, an incredible value, which is your genome and have you know the ability to have that um, sequenced and and vaulted so that that is included in the in, in our genetic cats nft um, that that we're launching on on the 28th of february some of these other direct to consumer testing companies like ancestry 23 i mean their entire their just their marketing budget is probably bigger than our entire budget Right. And that's the one thing we have to explain to people that um, people ask, like, how are you going to, you know, compete against 23andMe and Ancestry? And the way we would is we're relying on the ethos of Web3. We're relying on individuals who believe that one, they should have self custody of their genome, and two, that if they want to monetize their genome, right, then they can do that in a safe way. And for example, um, I don't know, uh, sorry, like like I said before, we lost connection. Um, There was a deal for Blackstone taking a majority stake in Ancestry.com for like $4.7 billion, I believe it's around there. And then Ancestry or 23andMe making a deal with GlaxoSmithKline for $300 million. Um, And the thing is, not a single person who had their genomes on both of these websites right ancestry 23 and me they didn't get a single penny from that 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 went nothing none of that went to anyone whose genomes actually built that database right and i don't think that's fair i think um the whole ethos of web3 is that the users of the platform are also the owners of the platform right and when you when you think about you know how how can genomes now compete with like these billion dollar companies it's believing that people will want to will will believe that if they're going to monetize their genome then they should be compensated fairly for it and i think everyone you know we just had a twitter spaces earlier today and one of the hosts said yeah i gave my uh I gave my father a 23andMe test and, um, you know, we used it and we found our ancestry or or something like that. And uh, now that you're thinking, now that you're speaking about it, yeah, we didn't get a single penny from when uh, Blackstone took, you know, a majority stake. And that's not fair, right? So the whole ethos of Web3 is to help kind of democratize capital. And going back to why are we using NFTs? Well, One way we thought that we could get people excited about self-custody of their genome and then monetizing their genome in a safe way is if, hey, why don't we use an NFT with this? And then because um, we spent so much time building that tech stack, right, these AMD SEV vaults and all this fancy technology, um, we kind of have this weird monopoly where if we wanted to safely make generative art from people's genomes, we can. Um, and that's, that's kind of like, uh, what we're hedging that if we can get people excited using NFTs and some of these, you know, web three native tools, DAOs, um, governance tokens, DeFi, things like that. Um, we can hopefully, if, if people believe in the vision, right. That we're kind of presenting, we can, we can take on some of these companies. At least that's the hope. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I, I'm in line, like I align with your vision and I think you absolutely coming at it from the the web three ethos approach which is it's really cool to see 
it's it's cool to see something just so completely different to any other project out there again like this merging of med tech finance custody um all of this stuff in in a way that it really is cutting edge i mean we haven't seen that before i think maybe just to to frame the timeline again for for people so 2018 you launched very much you were a web2 company and then 2021 is is when you turned you like pivoted towards web3 is that accurate i mean we we uh, i wouldn't say 100% that it's it, it's a pivot so so mm. we 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 because um, there's there's our proposition towards individuals um, which very much is in line with the web 3.0 community mm. um, you know as previously mentioned uh, democratization of capital you know to make a change for the better um, the privacy concern and, and you know being able to, 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 to have your data available to you um, and also the DAO right the, the autonomy of a DAO and, and mm. the decision making structure and you know it, it, it belonging to kind of a community of people and those people contributing with ideas and you know uh, every step of the way that that's that's really where, uh, we would like to be uh, Web 3.0. Now, the other component is we also work with universities. Uh, we also work with with governments or universities working closely with governments um, and non-governmental institutions um, who who basically have have a need to have an, an infrastructure, if you will, to get sorted um, uh, to, to get an entire infrastructure sorted for them. So an example of that is, is for instance, an, an, a national uh, genomic sequencing initiative in Australia that is doing research among the indigenous community there to, to, to find out something about, um, you know, the, 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 the genomes of, uh, of the people there. And so it's a university that's basically leading the entire project and they get their government subsidized to, 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 to grow it further, right? Now, the concern of such an organization is like we want to have this genome sequenced, but we want to do it with full respect for, of course, the individuals who give us the data. And we want to make sure that we can manage it correctly, that we can query it correctly, that we can keep it uh, somewhere correctly. So those are a lot of things, as you can imagine. If this is not your area of expertise, which for many of such organizations it isn't, then you need a strong partner who can help you out. Right. So and that is more our Web 2.0 proposition, if you will, mm. whereby we sit down with these organizations and work out kind of a, a, um, a, a kind of a good proprietary infrastructure with them that is very befitting with what we are doing in the Web 3.0 community. So I would I would opt for saying that we're hybrid in that sense, because if you work with such organizations, then. Um, you know, intern always says like you, you can't be the anonymous intern. You really need to have yeah. a face and a name, and you, 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 you know you need to you need to show who you are. There needs to be loads of compliance and transparency and whatever more, and that's okay, mm. right? Mm. So, um, uh, so yeah, so I, I think that's also very important to point out yeah. that it's not only Web 3.0, but we also want to continue to work with such universities and institutions and, and governments and whatever more. Yeah, no, that's that's really good uh good to frame it like and get that sort of clarity you mentioned uh the dow a few times but i i don't think we've discussed like when and how that was formed maybe we can go into that yeah yeah so i can i can maybe touch on that a little bit um so after our uh, miso sale right um so the miso sale was for the gene token and then the gene token is um the utility token of the platform so for example um if um, on Ethereum, right? Ethereum is the blockchain, but if I wanted to buy um, buy an NFT on Ethereum, I'd have to use the native currency of the Ethereum blockchain, which is Ether or ETH, right? And then in the real world, say I'm living in the US and I want to, I fly to Japan and I want to buy a soda, then I, I would have to convert my US dollars to Japanese yen, the native currency of that ecosystem to buy the soda. And in the same way for genomes DAO, if someone wants to query someone's vault, right? 
they need to convert that. So say a pharmaceutical company wants to query someone's vault, they need to convert that those dollars to gene, and then they would pay you in gene. So that's kind of mm -hmm. the gene aspect. So that's the utility token of the platform. All the queries are paid in gene. Now the gnome token is the governance token, right? Um, and the ownership token of the platform. And that is um, the way you get that is you, um, through DeFi. So basically when you stake your, uh, so you'd have to become a liquidity provider of the gene token, right? So um, for example, right now we're on Sushi Swap and Polygon. Um, you would take like in a 50-50 ratio, like $100 worth of gene and $100 worth of ETH, wrapped ETH because it's Polygon. And then you would um, get LP tokens for that. And then you take those LP tokens. Right now we're on Harvest Finance. And then uh, you'd stake those LP tokens LP tokens to earn GNOME tokens, right? Because um, we're providing liquidity incentives for that right now. And then with those GNOME tokens, um, you can um, vote on governance proposals. So for example, um, there is a governance proposal, I think, for naming the uh, NFT project. Um, and, and this is the funny thing about DAOs because um, we had a bunch of different names given by the DAO. I really liked CRISPR cats. A lot of other people did too. Mm. But unfortunately, um, the DAO went with genetic cats which is fine. Um, it's good. I think they're both good. But um, that's the idea that in a DAO, um, it's majority rule. I, and I think that's a good thing. And for example, we are, um, we're determining there's a snapshot vote right now to determine the resale royalty percentage that would go to public goods. And I think it ranged somewhere from like five to 20%, right? Um, and right now, the 20% is winning by the DAO members. So all the DAO members are saying, you know, we want the royalty percentage from the genetic cats NFT that goes to public goods, providing these sequencing kits for individuals in underdeveloped countries um, to be 20%, which I think is awesome, right? That's the, that's the whole point of like um, a community. And the other thing that um, is important about the DAO structure is the idea of going from like, zero to ownership. I think that's something that needs to be talked about more in crypto because unfortunately, you know, you'll see a lot of the mainstream headlines saying, oh, this was this hack or this was this rug pull or this was this scam or something. But there's some really interesting ways where you can um, provide capital to people who may not have been given the opportunity to develop capital. And what I mean by that is say we give, um, some of these sequencing kits to someone in a underdeveloped country, right? So say someone in Venezuela gets one of these kits and then they get their genome sequenced and then they choose to, they choose to accept queries, right? It, the way our platform works is um, that, that AMD SED vault is very similar to a ledger or a MetaMask, right? So whoever mm. holds a 12 word seed phrase is the only person that has access to the data and is the only person that can choose to accept or reject queries, right? So think of similarly signing a transaction on MetaMask. You can uh, you know, click sign and then go on your ledger or just click sign on MetaMask, or you can just reject that, right? Um, so say someone in Venezuela chooses to accept queries, right? Um, and then they get one query that's maybe like $50, another one's $100, and another one's $20, something like that. And they earn these gene tokens. What you can do using DeFi is you can actually um, become a liquidity provider for those tokens and then earn GNOME tokens. And then you go from someone donating a kit to you and then in a share to earn model, you can go from zero to ownership of a platform, which I think is really cool. And I think if you think of what, um, someone brought this up earlier in the spaces today, but I think poverty is, to one of two things, one, the lack of opportunity, but also the lack of capital. So if we can find ways, capital efficient ways that are also humanitarian um, using these crypto economic systems, then you can really um, make some major changes. Um, I, I mean, I think of any of the big companies that we think of like Facebook, right? If all that behavioral data that those, you know, you were given tokens for that and those tokens represented ownership over time, um, that would, you know, that'd be amazing, an amazing thing. Similarly with drugs, like anyone who's uh, genome or anyone who's involved in like the 
clinical trials or testing for, you know, a blockbuster drug, if they got 0.0001% of like, you know, the profits or something through some interesting token model, um, you can, you can really allow people to kind of escape poverty. And I think when, when that kind of narrative is assigned to like crypto and web three, that's when, um, it, I think that that's when people will stop thinking, oh, this, you know, this space is just a scam or they just kind of, you know, turn a blind eye to it. Yeah, that's honestly phenomenal. You covered a lot and I want to get into the social good aspect a little more, but I mean, I, I'm sure there are some people watching and listening now that are sort of feeling in over their head with the talk of like liquidity providers, DAOs, LPs, sushi swap, wrapped ether. And, and these are a lot of terms that you don't necessarily need to really understand to get involved with the project from the beginning. Like the the NFT itself, okay. you don't um, you don't really need to be involved with all this tokenomics to participate in the NFT drop and to have your um, genome sequenced to get the kit and to have custody of it, right? A absolutely not. No, so I, I was digging a bit in the weeds there, but no, I mean, I love uh, getting the weeds, yeah. but I also I'm cognizant that there are probably people who are, are watching that aren't as um, advanced in, in the tokenomics and, and the DeFi areas um, who might be feeling a little out of depth. And, and, but but yeah. I'm sure there are people listening who are like fascinated by it and want to learn more at the same token. So, yeah, no, it's a fine line. Sorry. no, you can get involved. That's also what we like is that you can get involved with Genomes DAO through multiple avenues, right? And, yep. and the NFT, I think, is, is is a very transparent one, a very concrete one, and also a very good kind of entry-level one. So so you can get the vault started, you can have your genome on there and then participate. You can become a vault holder, you can kind of you become a DAO member. Uh, every Thursday at 12.30 uh, p.m. EST, we have our um, DAO uh, meeting. So, uh, you know, all DAO members are welcome um, and, and, you know, we just go through our week and kind of t talk about, you know, short term as well as long term priorities. And people can just, you know, we just share ideas and then, you know, everyone gets on with, with their day after mm -hmm. after an hour meeting. But it's really refreshing and great. And people come, you know, in all sorts and sizes with all types of ideas. Uh, some are very crypto focused, very focused on the tone, and others are very much focused on. Um, social impact and, and 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 how to change the world and and kind of how to and bring in things. So there there there's you know there's there's a lot there in there um, you know for everyone's taste. So yeah, uh, yeah, 100%. yeah absolutely. And I, I just wanted to add that um, yeah, as Aldo mentioned, you, the kind of the NFT is kind of the gateway to the DAO a little bit, um, where once you kind of mint the NFT, you get in the Discord, and then. Once you're in the Discord, there's so many um, people who said, you know, this is my first time like doing anything with crypto. Like I have no idea what what's an LP, right? What are mm. these LP tokens? Why do I need them? And it's just so much fun kind of walking um, people through the process of like becoming a liquidity provider, like, you know, swapping to tokens on SushiSwap and everything and just seeing them like, wow, this is how this stuff works. Um, it's so cool. And it's, it's so empowering, you know, to be able to, you know, have control of, I guess, my wealth in a way. Um, but yeah, I, uh, just to clarify, right. So I think on the landing page, it says you monetize your genome. The way you would monetize your genome is that you would accept queries. And when you accept queries, you would be paid in gene. And then after you have the gene, that's when you, you know, you would decide what you want to do with it. So let, let's go to the NFT and talk about like, you know, the sale is coming up uh, 28th of Feb, I believe, is, is when it launches. I guess, what's on offer? What is the NFT Genetic Hats? Um, what is the cost going to be roughly? Uh, and uh, what do people get when they buy uh, the NFT? Yeah, so um, there's a really nice landing page um, that we made. It's uh, if you go to nft.genomes.io, you get your whole genome sequencing kit. So meaning that we would sequence your whole genome. Um, so we'd send you a kit, we'd sequence your whole genome through one of our sequencing partner partners, Nebula Genomics. So they're you know one of the trusted whole genome sequencing providers in the industry. And then you get your um, genome mining vault. So as we mentioned before, these AMD, these 
super cutting edge um, ledger metamask type um, vaults they are made by AAMD. And that's where the 100 gig file, which represents your genome is stored. And that's the, also the thing. Is of, it a hardware device thing that you get? No, it's a, it's a, it's virtual. So okay. similarly, when you like, if you download MetaMask, they'll give you your 12 word seed phrase, very similar thing with this. You'll, mm -hmm. you know, you activate your vault with the 12 word seed phrase. Um, and then the genome is stored there. And then whoever has access to the 12 word seed phrase is the only person who can accept or reject any queries. Um, so it's very similarly, like if you have a ledger or MetaMask, you don't give anyone that seed phrase. Mm. Same thing here. You don't um, give anyone that seed phrase and you store it in the same place you would um, your ledger seed phrase or your MetaMask seed phrase. And uh, obviously you get the cool looking cat NFT and then the cherry on top is um, once your genome is sequenced and vaulted, then uh, we'll take specific queries upon your consent, assuming that you approve. Um, then we'll take some queries from your genome and then input that to a generative art algorithm and then hopefully make some cool looking art um, that's from your genome. Um, yeah. So that's a quick TLDR. Cool. No, that's great. And so the, 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 with regards to, to the price, um, mm. we are, you know, we're very excited about the ability to bring you something that has a great virtual value, but also kind of a real life value. Um, uh, we, and, and, and of course, it's, it, it, there are many factors um, that come into play here, uh, also having to do with the laboratory that we're partnered up with and the cost that they could, you know, charge us for the sequencing. So we, we, we need to look at all those components. Um, we are, we, we, and so we're still working on the exact formula. So I think once people are, oh. You know, looking at this video, they will know they will know yeah. the price. Um, we was, we expect it to be around 0.2 ETH, um, uh, but yeah, to be confirmed. Yeah, the the closer we'll get. So we've actually yeah. changed the price on the landing page a few times based on the fluctuation of the price of ETH. Um, so a few days it's ago, been a crazy the price week. Of ETH, yeah, the price of yeah. ETH is one. Um, we we everything we input into our formula I said, okay, we can put this price of ETH. And then the price of ETH went down by like 8% in like three yeah. days. And we're like, ah, oh, shoot. Um, <laughs> so I guess the, the point here you want to say is that um, they're, uh, they're like fixed cost for, for some of these things. Right. right. And then we're the, the month we're, we're not like making any money off this stuff. We're basically selling the kits and the vaults at cost um, to just get more people excited about self custody of their genome. And then, where genomes DAO would um, be capital efficient and sustainable is that um, in the brokering of the data. So for example, if a query is given right um, to certain vaults and they're giving $50 per query, a small percentage of that would go back to genomes DAO to help fund the mm -hmm. operations. Um, so, but yeah, the TLDR, <laughs> we're hoping that the price of ETH just uh, uh, stabilizes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think um, we might have lost intern again. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense that you're not making money because at the beginning you said that it costs about $500 to sequence a genome. And then, you know, if you're looking at 0 0.2 ETH, the price of ETH is about 2,500 at the moment. So um, yeah, it, it's very clear that there's not, well, A, that there's a very real fixed cost associated with this. And so it makes sense that the price is um, at that point it's it's not like you're just making the numbers up out of thin air. So that's it's cool to see. Right. No, the, the yeah. I, I think the advantage for us is to grow as a decentralized database, right? Mm. So so we are we, we're keen to get the word out there, and we know that if we grow as a decentralized database, more organizations, more people will want to work with us, right? And this is our you know our step into the Web three mm. world reaching out to those people say, hey, if you want it, then then here's your chance. And we're very mm. excited about it. And you know what we've heard thus far that people are also very excited. Um, and, and the benefit for, for Genomes DAO is, is in the long run, because if we can grow up to a critical threshold, then more organizations will knock on our doors and they will basically mm. say, hey, I'm interested in doing research on this level or I'm, you know, I'm a pharmaceutical company and I would like to 
uh, the queries here and you know mm. all those things and th they will knock on our doors once we are effectively big enough so so that is our that is our mm. upside rather than you know this being the a profitable project right? which is which is why we're looking to do this at cost uh, and the other thing too, if, like if you're thinking about the way incumbents are doing it, right? Like a 23andMe, Ancestry, all the other things on the market. There are a lot of people in our Discord who said, I've not gotten 23andMe or an Ancestry test done because I've not had control of the data. But with mm -hmm. the things we have with these AMD vaults and all the other security measures we're taking, you have control of that data. And if you want to, you know, if you're a bioinformatician or something, you can download the raw data um, and do, you know, do things on your own with that. Obviously, it's like stored in your blockchain wallet. You have to sign off on that transaction. Um, not transaction, but sign, sign that off from the, the mm. wallet. Um, but that's, that's kind of the thing. And like, there, there's so many, um, there's so many scientists in, in our Discord who said, I would, I would have never done any of these things things until i heard about this project um and mm. that's that's kind of like the hedge we're saying that okay if we align with these um you know web3 very strong web3 ownership values that is the thing that will hopefully uh, be able to by word of mouth or something um grow this database not database but decentralized um I guess you could call it a little bit of a database, but decentralized one database. Yeah. But, I call but it the one, database, yeah, the one clarification here is that, and we had this question earlier in the morning, if someone somehow took all the governance tokens for genome stop, bought all of the gnome tokens and said, Hey, I want to get all the data in the database. The thing is, is that they wouldn't be able to because mm. that depends on your vault. Right. So the person like genomes DAO doesn't actually have your data. We just curate the data to your vault. Mm. Um, so in any sort of like governance attack by some like state sponsored actor or something crazy like that, your genome is still safe. Um, yeah. And I think that's the, I think that's the kind of the, the secret sauce here. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. I, I want to ask a little more about like l the logistics of how it works in terms of if a government entity a pharmaceutical company comes along and says hey you know genomes dow has a hundred thousand you know sequence genomes we would like to query them um you mentioned earlier that they would need to pay in the native gene token to do that but do you see them doing that at the moment like currently would, would they have the infrastructure set up to get a crypto wallet in their company and use that use eth to buy gene and then or, or is there a situation like an intermediate situation where they're paying you genomes down USD and that's being converted to genes somehow. I think, sorry, if I can open internally, you can, you can follow on. So um, our experience of, of dealing with big companies, whether these are research organizations or, you know, previously mentioned universities or government organizations, um, as well as pharmaceutical companies, it would be kind of a, a transitional scenario whereby we sit down with the company also because you know, what they want to query and how they want to query mm. requires some explanation, right? So, you know, specifically in the, in, in, in the short term, um, we, we would need to properly sit down with them and work out a scenario so they can, so, so the query can take place and they also mm. get uh, the right uh, research results uh, mm. for them. Um, and, and that would include the financial, you know, the, the financial side of things. It's kind of, kind of okay, here is, the gene, how we reward all the vault holders. Here's our, here's the cost. So how do we make these two worlds meet? Um, yeah. Previously in this conversation, I also said like in many cases, we're also, we have a bit of a hybrid form. So I think we would then kind of talk more to that end to get them going. Having said that, of course, it is our hope that eventually, let's say four or five years down the road, it's going to be a mainstream mm. thing so that, you yeah. know, that these organizations find their way to our database because, you know, um, I, I think we, we mentioned this, but it, it's a repeat consent model. So, mm. you know, a pharmaceutical company um, doesn't knock one time on our doors. They, they, they need to knock every time they want to do a specific bit of research, they can knock mm. on our doors. And um, that can go on for multiple times kind of with those vaults and, and whatever more. So it's not like a one-off transaction, right? So we hope, of course, that the companies who, who come to us will, 
will, will, will come to us on a recurring basis for uh, multiple years of time and not just not just one time with one transaction and then be gone. Um, um, and, and the way that that works has also to do with, with, the, with the vault structure uh, because, uh, and I think that's also very important to, to, to point out, is we wouldn't have any leakage of, of any kind when it comes to genomic information coming out of the vault. Because this is, uh, as intern said, like, you know, of, of, of people who know a little bit about it, they, they're, they're, they're very keen on keeping it in the vault and making sure that it doesn't leave uh, uh, the vault, that at all times it is protected, the data. So how the, the, the querying takes place is that the query is effectively sent into a vault specifically developed for the research question at hand. And the answers are kind of generated within that vault framework, right? Meaning, and, and what the, the organization gets back are the, is the result of that. Mm. So, you know, the, 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 the question is sent uh, uh, to the, the data, and then out of that comes an answer, and that answer is shared with the organization that we work with. Meaning that no data, no raw data mm. at any point will leave the vault or is mistakenly sent to the organization. Um, uh, that is also very important to point out. If you had questions like, listen, you're going to, you know, if once the data is out, the data is out, right? Then, mm. then the organization has your data. So why would they come back to you? Well, mm. the answer is the data is never out. The data stays in the vault. Mm. So a good example of this, Seneca. So for yeah. example, well, you say, assuming you have your genome mining vault, right? Um, someone wants to query uh, a bunch of vaults and then they'd send a query uh, to your vault saying, does Zeneca have the gene for long COVID? And then that query, if you choose to accept it, right, would go into the vault and it would look and would see, okay, does Zeneca have the gene for long COVID? And it would be a yes or no answer. And that's what would be... Um, given to the research organization, not the raw, like ATCGH, not your raw mm. genome, not the raw genomic information, just the answers to the query, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that it makes, that's a, yeah, I'm really glad you clarified that because, you know, one of the things that came, comes to mind is, you know, if you, it's like, if you're giving them access to your genome, it sounds a bit like they can read your genome and then if they want, they have it and then they can use it again. But so it's very specific that, they ask a question, basically. They, they query a particular thing, and then the, the vault spits out the answer. Exactly. Correct. And then to follow up on that, say another research organization wanted to ask you the same exact question, then they'd have mm. to send that same query to your vault. You'd have to approve that again, but from a different research mm. organization. Does Zeneca have mm. the gene for long COVID? And then that result would be given back. So you can actually, like, it's as Aldo mentioned, it's a repeat consent model. Um, and then we want to, I just want to clarify one thing. A lot of people think that, oh, we're putting genomes on the blockchain and that's actually not what we're doing. That's one kind of a dumb idea because if you put someone's genome on the blockchain, you can view someone's whole genome. Like you wouldn't want to do that. And then two, um, it's not really feasible because someone did a calculation and said that 100 gig like genome on the Ethereum blockchain would cost like 64 ETH. Right. So it's just you, you can't put genomes on the blockchain. But the reason why we're using the blockchain is that it creates an audible record every time a vault is queried. So, for example, if it says this address is querying this vault and being paid this much gene, that is what is stored on the blockchain. And that is something that cannot be erased ever. Mm. And this solves the problem because when you give your data to, you know, some hospital system or a 23andMe or Ancestry or something like that, you don't know what happens after you've given it, right? But this model creates it so that there's a very clear, auditable, immutable record of where and how your you know, genome is being queried. And if you want to not allow anyone to ever query it, then more power to you. You have that option. Mm -hmm. But it's about giving people the option to do what they want with their genome and their data. I just wanted to, uh, to add that it's not only kind of the brokering. It's not only working with other organizations, which, uh, you know, allows for the querying to take place. So as the genomes DAO, our developers and our team, so we work with bioinformaticians and, and you know, people who know genomic data, they're also developing surveys and reports. So you can discover more about yourself mm -hmm. by keeping 
you know, with keeping the data in your vault, right? Because the incentive is, yes, there's a privacy. Yes, there are the additional financial rewards, but there's also finding out more about yourself, right? Asking crazy questions that, that can be found in your <laughs> genome. And, and that's also what we do because we don't, you know, we want you to at least have the opportunity to mm. find out more through our, uh, our solution about yourself. So currently we have developed um, a report for Ancestry, much like what 23andMe mm. has done in MyHeritage and Ancestry.com. Uh, we have done one for rare diseases, uh, but in the future you could also have one for allergies. Um, uh, and, and after that, you, you, you'd have one for, okay, my, my, my offspring, what kind of hair color are they going to mm. have? And, you know, we're just at the very beginning of, of mm. understanding our genome. So as you can imagine, in the next few years, you're going to have a lot more of those. So we're very excited also about the prospect of developing these reports ourselves. Um, mm. And if not through ourselves, we we're also going to build an API whereby other organizations who want to query the genome and have a good reason for doing so um, can can work with us. So you know it doesn't always have to be big pharma because I think that's mm. what a lot of people visualize, like okay, big pharma, and then there's money coming in and whatever. But you know, in this day and age, whereby new technology solutions are being born, you you could imagine that that's an organization that has a very sharp um, you know uh, uh, approach or proposition when it comes to genomic data that could be very beneficial for us as well that could help with the understanding and that they're just approaching this from a research angle so there's no commercial benefit here other than the knowledge right and we think that would also be crazy cool to, to collaborate with them on such a level so we don't just always want to say well if there's no money it's not going to happen uh, because at the end of the day, we're we're in this also for scientific progress. That you know the data is used in the right way, um, you know, with with the full knowledge of the individuals. But that you know, it, it helps us further build on the understanding of who we are. Right. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I just wanted to give a small anecdote. So, like, people ask, like, why would I want to know, like, what my genome says? And I'll give, like, one example. So I worked in pharmacogenomics, right? And then when I uh, genotyped my genome or sequenced my genome, um, I, I looked at one of the genes, and one of the genes, um, it's called CYP1A2. So this gene is responsible for metabolizing um, stimulants. So stimulants can be anything from, like, a Red Bull, a coffee to the extreme end, like Adderall, speed, cocaine, right? Those are all actually stimulants, believe it or not. And I've lived my whole life thinking that, um, oh, I'm super sensitive to coffee and I'll never drink coffee. And for, you know, since childhood, I never drank coffee because I thought, oh, I'm extremely hypersensitive. I can't drink it. Otherwise I won't sleep. Funny thing is, is that when I got my genome sequenced, I saw that, um, my genome said I was an ultra rapid metabolizer for coffee, meaning that my body just burns through coffee like crazy. And mm. my, me thinking, me thinking that, oh, I'm super sensitive to coffee was actually just all in my head. Um, mm. And it's little things like that. So when we say mine your genome, we mean that um, we're going to open up the API to, um, you know, if there's a really bright, like, you know, bioinformatician, B PhD student who, um, knows a lot about like marijuana interactions with genetics, right? They can develop their own like test and query where you can run that on your genome and say, okay, is like, would this strain of like marijuana work best with my genetics? Or like another mm -hmm. one would be, um, you know, do I, someone who's a COVID researcher, do I have the gene for long COVID? Or another one might be something fun, like am I a super taster or something? Or mm. am I sensitive to coffee? So you can do a lot of really cool things um, when you have self custody of your genome, um, and it's just it's about informing people of their health and also kind of making genetics fun, right? Um, yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's how, I was going to ask about that as well because a lot of people, the reason they go to Ancestry or Twenty Three andme is because of those reports. They want to they don't want just their genome sequence. They want their genome sequence and then information about themselves revealed so it's really cool to hear that you're thinking in that direction and and coming out with solutions for for users to have their um the i guess reports or, or queries answered i want to ask a prob a potentially tricky question what is in your minds the biggest danger 
to all of this. I mean, you start including genomes and, you know, technology, blockchain, security, self-custody, um, money. Have What sort of, it, what concerns you, if anything? Like, what, what are you like really careful about? I don't know if this makes sense. Make, this question makes sense, but the, to me, it seems like this is a, it's a potentially this sticky area of ethics and morals and money and finance and tech and security. Um, and I'm sure, based on our conversations, you've put a lot of thought into every area. But is there a particular area that concerns you? I'll take a stab from the the crypto angle, and then I'll give it to Aldo for more the um, data security side. But I think the biggest issue, and this came up on a Twitter space the other day ago, is that. Um, not everyone un- understands the concept of like the 12 word seed phrase, right? Mm-hmm. I think there's this running joke, um, it, at least on Twitter about board ape yacht club owners and giving their seed phrase away to like MetaMask yeah. support agents. And if you think, right, what if you give your, um, 12 word seed phrase away to your genome? Like that would be mm-hmm. horrible. That'd be just as bad as like losing your board ape or maybe even potentially worse. Right. Mm-hmm. And, I think it comes down to, um, one, there needs to be more education. If you look at the incumbent models, they're not great, right? You're trusting someone else with your genome, your genetics. And the whole point of Web3 is trustless systems, as Aldo mentioned. Mm. He's, he's 100% right. And I would also say that um, the awareness and ed- education, sometimes less so now, but when you can imagine... We, we started the idea of the company, you know, we founded the company in 2018, but in 2014, we were already talking about DNA data and how this is going to evolve. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, we were very much in an echo chamber because people didn't really get it, right? They didn't really get the value of DNA data and kind of how that was going to evolve. And, you know, some people are just frankly sloppy, you know, but not, not because you know, they're sloppy people. It's just because they say like, well, what do I care, right? What do I care about where my data is and, you know, how that lives? So n- not everyone is on the same boat, in the, in the same boat when it comes to the use of that data because they don't actually realize the value of the data, right? Mm. So what it, what is dangerous is that people don't properly listen um, a kind of, you know, to our message. So, you know, without being condescending, but... What, what 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 I always say is like whether you like genomes now, yes or no, please be aware that your genome is worth something, and mm. always be aware that you know whenever someone is asking for your data, whenever someone is asking for a sample, you know whether this is saliva or whether this is blood or whatever, anything that would allow them to sequence your genome, this could happen to you that someone will sequence it. There was an article that appeared, I think, a month back in The Telegraph, one of the biggest newspapers in in the United Kingdom, whereby they described a government-selected COVID testing vendor, so a a, a company who was taking PCR tests on behalf of the government, and they were caught in the act because they were trying to sell on all the Mm -hmm. samples that they had aggregated from the tests for further genomic sequencing without the knowledge of all those people who took these tests. So, and again, this is not a big brothery idea. Mm. <laughs> this is happening, right? This is live, yeah. really happening. You can look it up. We've, 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 we've blogged about it on genomesdata.medium.com, you know, with the link to the article and everything like that. And, and sadly, every single day we read new things kind of, you know, similar to this. So it's almost like, okay, people be aware that your data has this value, and but also be aware, like even if you're not interested in the financial rewards or whatever, but be aware that it might backfire, that if you are too careless with it, it might come back to you and 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 kind of hit you in a, in a, in, a, in a very unpleasant way. As I said before, you know, being denied insurance policies, uh, not mm-hmm. being hired by specific employers, the data being somewhere in a database that you've you know, you never had any dealings with. You know, like, that's just the very beginning. So my concern, like the bigger all over concern, is that people don't really listen to the message. That they don't wake up to, hey, you know, what do I care about my data? And you mm. know, or, or, yeah. You know, so be be careful. That would be 
that will be one of the biggest messages. And, and that goes hand in hand with the education that interns said. And yes, yeah. the 12 seat, um, uh, 12 word seat phrase and kind of all those things, uh, education about the solution at hand definitely as well. Sorry, intern, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. I, I keep getting rugged. I don't know why. I'm even, I'm not <laughs> Normally even it's Twitter back. spaces, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to add intern uh yeah no i guess the only thing is is that as web3 takes over more different segments and industries right and people are get accustomed to um like metamasks and seed phrases and things like this gets more normalized i i think we'll get there um and i think obviously um i mean it will we've just seen over the last year right like um EIP 1159, right? It just made things a little bit like it made things cleaner. Um, mm. And I think that's going to happen going forward. Um, and, and I think it's, we're going to get to a point where, um, you know, it, your 12 word seed phrase is like your social security number, right? Like anyone's mm. like, oh, you, you know, they, they leaked your social security number and everyone knows what that is. But right now, not mm. everyone knows what, um, you know, your 24 word yeah. ledger. Did. So I think, I, I think we're going to get there. And, um, yeah. Yeah. It just takes time. Um, yeah. time and education. I want to ask about terms of people allowing, you know, any entity to query their genome and, and to earn income off that. Do you have any rough ideas on how much money that would bring in per query? I mean, I imagine it depends on the query and, and the entity and the number, like everything else, but like any ballpark figures. Um, so I can take a stab at that. So right now we're we're kind of in the in the phase of just building a big enough data set that any big research entity or pharma would want to query it in the first place. So that's that's kind of why we did the whole ten thousand genetic cats thing. Um, so we don't have really any numbers on that, but what we can tell you is that because you are in full control of your um, vault. Right. So say you have a big pharmaceutical company like a Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, and they're saying, oh, we want to query your genome. We want to look at this like we want to see if you have um, this specific gene or something and we'll give you one dollar. Well, because you have, uh, you know, you have full custody, you have the ability to reject that query. Mm. Right. Um, you yeah. don't have to accept queries that are um, insulting. So. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, on the flip side, if you have, you know, if you want to be able to curate your data to medical researchers working on a, a, like a cure for like a rare disease or something, then you might say, you know what, I don't want to charge anything for this. I'd happily like give that to you. Um, so it, it's kind of on that front. If Aldo maybe wants to um, add some color to that. Yeah, it, it, uh, I 100% what Intern says. It, it's very difficult to give an indication what, what is inspiring is that the majority of the sequencing, um, you know, of sequencing genomes is effectively done in the United States and I believe Northwestern Europe, right? Mm. We, there is so much unknown territory when it comes to understanding the genomes of, of basically the population, you know, for instance, population in Sub-Saharan Africa, mm. um, further into Asia. So there, you know, we're only at the very beginning of this, and it's very highly concentrated in one specific territory. Um, I think uh, two weeks ago, we spoke to people representing an organization in Mexico, whereby they were doing research, uh, um, you know, within a specific community when it came to um, their genetics and early onset Alzheimer's. You know, what, we're, we're, we're talking kind of, you know, very inland in Mexico where people, you know, they've never heard of sequencing or they don't understand all of those things. Yet all of a sudden that could be brought in as a solution in such an environment to such people. And when you talk about income, because, you know, the, if you look at, for instance, the, the 23andMe deal with GlaxoSmithKline, that's $300 million for querying 5 million exomes. So if you mm -hmm. do the math, it's like $60 per person, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, $60, it's appreciated, but, you know, for our standards, it's, you know, it's not a huge amount, but take mm -hmm. that $60 to Sub-Saharan Africa, or maybe, you know, there are to specific people in Mexico or whatever, then $60 all of a sudden a lot, right? So, mm -hmm. so I, I also think you, you need to look at the fact that you can 
you can you can help people with with specific amounts and that depending on where they are and depending on kind of what is being done with the data the reward could be tremendous and for some people it could be a lot of money right mm. so so um yeah it's but but it's hard to give you kind of a number because you know there are lots of things that we yeah. need to do before we get to that point right that and you know and one thing I'd like to add is that um, a lot of therapeutics developed, they're not developed with um, m- most open genomic data sets are from, you know, Eastern European, e- sorry, Eastern European, Caucasian um, individuals. They're not from like historically min- marginalized um, demographics and that's kind of a that's kind of a big issue because when you're developing some of these drugs, you don't mm. you know you you don't have those demographics in mind, right? And that's why I think it's important as um, as the cost of whole genome sequencing goes down, right? To hopefully at some point zero cost whole genome sequencing, um, a lot of the drugs will be developed in in mind of everyone, right? Not just certain mm. demographics. Um, that that's actually a really big issue. Um, right now. And I think things like this where individuals have self-custody of their, of their genome and their genetic data, and they can curate that to um, whoever, whichever entity they want to, I think that can help reduce um, healthcare disparities in, in marginalized communities, or marginalized demographics. Yeah. I mean, honestly, just the, again, hearing you talk, the possibilities of of all of this is incredible and the way that it can lead to sort of a redistribution of wealth in a way and helping people all around the world who may have not had the opportunity to have access to you know a lot of things uh yeah it's inspiring it's exciting i want to ask um i think this is the last question that i have but let's say um how does it work someone goes and buys a genetic ads nft what what are the next steps in terms of when are they going to get their kit sent? How do they get the like? How do you get the information about where where to send it to? Where do they send it back to? And then how do they get access of the vault and all of that? What what are like the logistical steps? Sure. So I'm looking at the landing page right now. You'd mint the genetic cats NFT after you've minted. The reveal will be sometime on I think March eighth, maybe the seventh, um, and uh, we've gamified it so there's like rarity and things like that so that makes it fun um mm-hmm. but then after that um i think maybe a week or two later you would redeem um the sequencing kit on the ether cards platform so you would go there and mm. you redeem um a code and that code is a one-time code that you would take and then you would put that into the genomes.io website and then from the genomes.io website um we would you'd fill out um your address information and we're cognizant of individuals who um want to respect their privacy even more. So if you want to, you can send it to like a PO box or a workplace address or somewhere Mm -hmm. else where you have the ability to receive packages. Um, So we send you the kit. And then as soon as you get the kit, you would um, activate your vault, right? You get your 12 word seed phrase and everything. And then you'd give us uh, your saliva sample. And then you'd have to send it back that sample. And we have like a like a little package that you send it in and you'd send it back to the sequencing lab. And then um, at the sequencing lab, um, it would take about 14 to 16 weeks to sequence your whole genome. And then once your genome is sequenced, it's uploaded into your vault. And then in your vault, that's where um, we have some reports live. So the ancestry, the carrier status, and hopefully by the time uh, your genome is sequenced, we'll have some more cool things on there. And uh, then after that, um, you know, you can accept or reject queries. Um, Hopefully by that point we're at you know we're at that ten thousand genome threshold and then lastly is the fun NFT part. Um, if you choose to accept, uh, we want to make some generative art from certain queries of your genome. So for example, some I'm just giving like a, an example here. We might not actually do this specific thing, but um, if your ancestry is like twenty percent from like Ireland and then fourteen percent from here, fourteen percent from here, um, we can take those queries and then input that into like a generative art algorithm mm. and then create so cool. um, an NFT that represents, uh, I guess, like your ancestry based on your DNA, which I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's, that's amazing. I love it. 
um that all makes sense it's pretty crystal clear one i guess selfish question if i buy multiple can i give them like to my fiance and she can just sequence and send in so she doesn't yeah and then and then she gets her own vault right yeah so we actually had this question asked in the discord today so if you want multiple of them you have to mint multiple genetic cats and you'd have to redeem each one of those kits individually yep. it's not like one account can have so i think the yeah. answer is yes you can but you would need to redeem them individually yeah. so so yeah. that's, Which makes that's sense. something you should should be aware of that yeah, yeah. That, uh, because we we need to send the kits to different in the you know different individuals. right yeah no that makes sense uh, i i just remembered that you're using the ether cards platform and actually uh the video that will be released just before this is with the founder of EtherCards because I, I interviewed him as okay. well. So that's, yeah, uh, listeners will be aware, hopefully, if they've seen that video, aware of the EtherCards platform and all it offers. It's it's really fantastic, actually. So, yeah, yeah. I think um, that sort of wraps it up for my questions. Was there anything that we didn't touch on that you might want to get into before we before we wrap it up? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say that um, I think Vitalik made a post on this and I think use and it can also uh, talk about this in some of your tweets but just um I, I think there's been a lot of like wealth created right in the nft and crypto space and i think that that shouldn't cloud anyone's judgment and i, I think we should find ways to give back fi find mm. ways and create capital efficient but humanitarian systems that that give back to um, those who are less fortunate and then just really focusing on the public goods aspect. Um, I yeah. think that's, I, I think that would do the whole crypto NFT and space, um, <laughs> Web3 space, just a, you know, tremendous. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> it sounded like he, a spider just fell on him or something. My God. Oh, it's. You all right there? Yeah. What happened? Yeah, no, it, I lost. Uh, I lost again. Or wait, can you hear me the whole time? Yeah, we could hear you. Yeah. We could hear your screen. We didn't. Oh, I, you. I, I uh, sorry. I was just <laughs> frustrated because, like, I lost. Like, it said I lost you guys, and I was oh. like, again. Yeah, no, we yes. thought something happened to you. It sounded to me like like a spider just fell on your head, and you're like, yeah. ah. <laughs> no, no, I was just so. Bro, I keep this in. This is yeah, good. no, please. Good. Yeah, no, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll keep this in. Tom, you keep this in. <laughs> If, if people want to read more, do more research, find out more about all of this, like not just the NFT, but, you know, maybe they're interested in the DAO and the tokenomics and the tech and, and how that all works, where, where are the best places for that research to take place? So we, 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 we keep track and we try to be as meticulous as we can in describing, for instance, the technology and, and what we said about the utility token and the governance token. Um, and we, we put it all on Gitbook. So the URL for that is genomes.gitbook.io and then slash genomes.io hyphen docs. Um, and we'll, we'll be sure to include these links. As yeah, well. that'll be in the show notes as well. Yeah, so go, just go to genomes.gitbook.io where, whereby we go into detail about a lot of what we, what we discussed now, yeah. including the vault technology. And you would also find uh, links to our blog. So, you know, uh, about mm -hmm. all the deals that were done by these direct to consumer genetic companies mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, cold links. So you can verify uh, that, that yep. whatever we said is, is, is true. So that would be definitely a good place to go. Good to, book. To catch and up. then um, the discord as well, I presume is just a good place for information. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have further questions and everyone always does with this project, mm. um, hop in the discord, ask us questions. And then if you, um, we're always there on, uh, as Aldo mentioned on Thursdays at 1230 PM Eastern time, we have a community meeting every week. So if someone wants to just hop in and say like, you know, what, how does this work? Why are you doing this or this thing or that thing? Um, come to the community meeting we're always happy to uh, answer questions because you know this project is like you know there's there's a lot there's a lot of moving parts here so we just want to make sure everyone's on the same yeah. page yeah yeah i mean i think this this discussion chat conversation i think has been really at least for me again insightful and, and hopefully it's given people some insight into the project and how it works but it is, an, it is a complicated project. There's no two ways about it. it. I mean, if you look at it just from the NFT part, you can sort of decipher. It's not that tricky. You buy the NFT if, if you're on a genome sequence and then there's a few steps, but there's a lot of meat to it. It's, this is a, lot of, it's a very sub, 
Dan Shul project, which is um, which is fascinating. You know, it's different to a lot of other projects, um, but it might take a little more work to understand all the moving parts. And that's where yes. DYOR, do your own research, something I always say, and I think everyone in this space says, if you're looking into projects, um, yeah, all, all the res resources are there for that to happen. So, yeah, um, thank you both so much. This has been wonderful as always. Thank you. Thank so you so much. much for having us. Uh, it's really been a pleasure and an honor, Roy. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to following along for many, many years, honestly. <laughs> okay, there we have it. Uh, that was, I enjoyed that conversation so much. I could have chatted with Aldo and intern for hours and hours and hours. Like, I, I want to, there's so much to unpack with this project, as you probably saw. It's very, um, complex and there are a lot of layers to it but at the very surface level the nft project itself is quite straightforward and simple you buy the nft you get the genome kit you get access to your your genome and then you can do whatever you want with it basically it's yours and um there are a lot of cool things that are uh possible so you you, you heard all of it you, you know what's up um i really recommend everyone that is interested join their discord check it out ask questions um keep an eye out for this drop which is actually happening tomorrow, um, the day after this video goes out. So it's coming up quickly. Um, I do have to disclose that. So I advised Genomes for the last four months, really. We've, I've been working with them since I very first heard about this project. I was like, yes, yes, I, I want to be a part of this. Um, let me help. Let's um, let's figure something out. So as part of that, we came to the uh, agreement to, for them to give me 6% of the initial sale revenue as my advisory fee. Um, I asked for some of that in free mints to give back to the Zen Academy community. So I'll be getting a hundred genomes, genetic hats, NFTs. They will all be going into the Zen Academy vault and giving out to the community. Um, and honestly of the, of any sale revenue, it's probably going back into the Zen Academy wallet anyway, because pretty much everything I do these days is going, it's funneling back to Zen Academy. It's, it's, it's my life's mission now. It's, it's, it's everything I do in this space. It all funnels back to Zen Academy. So um yeah i uh i'm excited for the future i'm excited to mint a few i think i'm on the mint list <laughs> i always do this i forget to get myself on the mint list we had a thousand spots to allocate that's right yeah i am on the list I, I did get a spot um thankfully so i'll be minting some i'll be getting my genome sequenced and hopefully finding out some cool stuff about it and then um potentially making some money down the line all right uh oh yeah if you enjoy the video then please uh i really appreciate likes subscribes subscribes subscriptions comments uh if you have any comments questions uh shares all that kind of stuff otherwise have a lovely day bye